I've had a lot of people ask me how to improve the quality of their webinars and their web broadcasts. And today, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what you need to consider when setting up your webinars and your web broadcasts so that you look your best as well. I'm going to give you some comparisons and examples, real world examples, so you'll see it from the perspective of your audience, so you'll know exactly what they're experiencing and how you can shape that as well. And today, we're going to cover four different categories and things that you need to really consider when you're doing your broadcasts. And the four things are your audio, your video, your lighting, and your bandwidth. Those are really the four things that you need to focus on and, and maximize in order to have a great looking webinar. And today we're going to cover two different types of cameras. I'm going to show you just a USB webcam and then compare that with a DSLR camera and show you the two extremes and you can see the difference there and what you can expect in difference and quality. And then also I'm going to take you in and show you three different types of microphones. Uh, the first microphone being, of course, the microphone that's built into the webcam, the Logitech C920. And the second one will be the uh, Rode NT3 microphone and then also a lavalier microphone. And I'll show you exactly what microphones I'm using. I'll also show you and let you hear exactly how they sound individually and compare each one as we go forward. So before we go any further, let's go ahead and start out. We'll talk about First of all, lighting and audio. I would say that most people, when they consider setting up their webinars and they want to have the best looking and best sounding uh, webinar, one of the things they consider first is camera. But in reality, the most important thing I would say is audio. You can have poor quality lighting and a poor camera, but if your audio is great, people will hang in there and they'll definitely be engaged. But if you have poor audio, but great camera and great lighting, it won't matter. It's You're going to lose people because the audio is really that critical. You can have very good sounding audio and really engage with people. So I would say that should be your priority. Now also the thing to consider as well is your bandwidth. You want to make sure that your upload speed is really good. Uh, as, get it as good as you can. Check with your internet provider and also you can go to your uh, web browser and you can type in speedtest.net or speedtest.com, one of the two, and it'll take you to a site where it will actually test your bandwidth. And this will test your download speed and your upload speed. And the one you should be most concerned with is your upload speed because that's what you're going to be able to send your data with. And if you have a very slow upload speed, your quality will be restricted by that. So if you're going to expect to broadcast in 1080p, I highly recommend you have an upload speed of a minimum of 4 to 5 megabytes. And uh, if you don't have that, then talk to your internet service provider and see if you can have that increased for yourself and you'll have a much better quality of an upload image and you won't have as much interference or dropping and your, your audience will experience the best there. Now your audio, you definitely want to have good audio and then your lighting. Your lighting is important and I would say lighting is almost more important than the quality of your camera as well because you can have a great camera but if you have poor lighting, it's not going to make much difference. You can have a, a low quality camera and great lighting and it'll make all the difference in the world. So if you have a camera even on the low end that has the ability to adjust the exposure and the white balance and so on, then you can do pretty well. And the thing to consider when getting your lighting is to consider the type of lighting that you have. You want to look at your bulbs that you're using and check to see what Kelvin balance they have. And you'll see a number like 3400K or 6500K or 5000K. And really what you want to strive to do is have each one of your bulbs the same setting, the same uh, color balance. Now keep in mind that some manufacturers what they do is they list them as like a soft white or daylight balance and that kind of thing. You'll see that name on some of the packaging. Well what you want to do is really look for the number because be depending on the manufacturer some manufacturers might call daylight balance 5500K while another one might call it 6500K. So you really want to be careful about that and make sure that it, you're actually measuring the Kelvin by the actual number that, that they're providing for you. So like I said make sure that all your lights and your bulbs are matched and uh, you can pretty much Google uh, lighting and look up how to set up your lighting and do that and I'll also cover some of that uh, in a future webinar as well. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, we're going to go through the ringer here. We're going to run through first cameras and then we're going to go into audio and then uh, I'll show you a little bit of the lighting as well and some of the setups and some of the versatility that you can have. And like I said, by the end of this, you'll have experienced it and seen it from the perspective of your audience so you'll know what to expect and what you should get as far as hardware goes depending on what you want to deliver. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll talk about the cameras here. I have two cameras here, and the way this is set up, I have the Logitech C920 that's actually sit and mounted into a hot shoe of the Lumix GH4. Uh, this is actually the GH3 camera here. 
but it's a mirror image of this. And this way, both cameras are exact same distance from me. So when we're comparing these, these settings are pretty much the same. I have both cameras set to auto white balance and auto exposure and so on. And uh, the only difference is that the, the Lumix, the GH4, is set to a manual focus. And the reason I did that is because of the lens I'm using. I'm using a 20 millimeter pancake lens. And depending on the lens you have, it's going to uh, allow you to fill the screen and also the distance of the camera from that lens. Now, if you're curious about how I'm getting this signal into the computer, basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking out of the HDMI port, which a lot of the modern cameras today have an HDMI port out. And that goes through an HDMI cable into my PC through the back Blackmagic Intensity Pro card. And that captures uh, to my PC. And I'm using some software that's actually open source software. It's free download. It's called Open Broadcaster. And you can download that. And that software allows you to capture multiple sources of video and audio. And you can actually record to your hard drive or you can stream it up to YouTube Live or um, you know, there's lots of different ways you can use it. You can use it on Ustream and so on. And then if you get a YouTube Live account, they even have a free version of Telestream Wirecast that you can use, and that's pretty good as well. And you can always upgrade that version as well. So let's go ahead and dive in and, and take some comparisons here. So here we have the Logitech C920. And you'll notice first off that the background is a little more into focus. The field of view is much broader, so you see more of the room here. Um, it's probably a little more grainy. Uh, there's a little more noise and contrast in there. Now, if you go to the, the GH4, you'll notice that, first of all, you're, you're much closer, even though the camera is the exact same distance, and that's because of the lens and the, and the settings that are on that camera. And you'll notice the background's out of focus. The depth of field is different with this camera. So we're going back here. And, of course, you know, we're comparing a, a, a very expensive camera, to, you know, relatively to the, to the USB camera. So, you know, it really isn't a fair contest if you're trying to, to uh, put one against the other. I'm simply showing you these so that you know when you're broadcasting. If you, if you want really high quality, you probably want to get yourself a DSLR camera. But today, in my opinion, the Logitech C920 is, is the better of the webcams that are out there on the market today. And it's, uh, of course, this is February of 2015, and that could change at any time. But today, the Logitech C920 is a, just a great webcam. It's great for using all around from Skype to uh, Google Hangouts on Air to YouTube Live or Ustream and so on. So going back again, comparing, here's the GH4. Here's the C920. Now, one thing I want to also show you is that you can manually adjust the Logitech C920 and I've got it to autofocus and everything here I can turn this off and actually bump up the gain if I want to and you can really dial this in real well and I do recommend that you do this I have it set to autofocus just for the purpose of this demonstration but I can turn this down a bit I can bump up the brightness if I want to I can adjust the contrast to the extremes I can also uh, come in here and adjust the color intensity a little more blues I can also adjust the white balance. I do recommend that you adjust the white balance uh, and set it manually because depending on your lighting, one thing I've noticed is that this Logitech C920 will kind of flicker in and out of the white balance. It'll adjust automatically, and it looks a little odd. The camera looks like it's going a little bit gray to green to, you know, it's kind of bouncing around there. So I do recommend that you dial this in and set it manually just like that. And one of the other things that I want to point out with this camera as well is that you have the ability to zoom in. So I can actually zoom in with this setting here. I can also, once I've zoomed in, I can pan around a little bit. I can move my, my head inside the screen there. And this camera is set to record at 1080p right now. Now, the other thing to notice is that when I zoom in, you'll notice it's, it's a digital zoom. It's not a manual or a physical zoom. It's not a lens that you're focusing and zooming in. So it's not a mechanical zoom. It's a digital zoom. So essentially what that means is that it's zooming in on the picture itself. So the pixels are getting larger, and you'll notice that. You'll be able to see some of the pixelization a little bit. It looks a little noisier when you do that. So you can see here is zoomed out normal. Here we are to zooming in and then let's do a comparison here so here's the GH4 here's the Logitech the Logitech holds its own pretty well considering it's a, a camera that's under $100 it's doing pretty well and there's both of them side by side alright so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this back out and just for the rest of this 
broadcast, let's go ahead and set this camera to auto balance and auto focus. Okay, so there we go. We've got that set to auto. I'm going to go back here. Now let's go ahead and dive in and let's talk about audio. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about each of the three different microphones. I'm going to show you how they're interfaced here. And then I'm also going to give you an example of each one. And I'll show you how they interface with the computer as well. So I'm going to zoom out here a little bit because I want to show you. First of all, this is the Logitech C920. There's a default camera that's built into the camera, and that's what most people use out of the box. And you're listening to me on that right now. And you might notice the room is a little large. And depending on your room, if you have hardwood floors or hard floors and you have a flat ceiling, the sound might bounce around a bit in there. It picks up more of the room noise there. It's not as focused of a, of a microphone. And for some people, that might be okay, depending on how close you are. If you're far away, it's definitely noticeable. And sometimes it sounds like you're really distant as well. And your audience will get a little bit irritated. People, they don't realize that audio has such an impact on them. They're getting irritated. They don't know why. But it's typically because of the audio. You want great sounding audio. Now, the other microphone I have is the Rode NT3. And that's this microphone here. And this microphone, I've actually got it interfaced with the computer here through an XLR connection and I'm zooming out with the webcam here and you can see the microphone here is coming across on a boom pole from my mic stand and it hovers over my desk. I keep it about two feet from my face so you're hearing it at about two feet here um, and you can see it's pretty clear. It a, a, sounds really good, it has a larger sound, it's because of the diaphragm in the microphone. Um, I have other microphones I could test out here, but I chose to, to use this one. I, it's a pretty good all-around microphone. I use this a lot of times when I'm on stage and speaking. I put this one into the audience because it picks up a lot of the, the sound around there, and it's pretty clear. Uh, really good for that as well. Now, the other microphone I have is the uh, Rode Lavalier mic, and that's this microphone right here. And you can see I'm getting close here and moving it away. You can hear the sound there. Now this microphone, I've got it interfacing, let's put this right here, and I've got this uh, interfacing with XLR, and typically the way, and just to show you, there's a, an adapter, I've got it connected to this adapter, and there's multiple types of adapters you can get with this Rode Lavalier mic. This is what's called a Micon 4, I believe it is a Micon 4, it converts it over to XLR, and what that does is allow me to run an XLR cable into the little device behind me here, which is a Tascam DR100. And I've got that going into one channel on there, and I'm recording that way. And then my Rode NT3 is also running into the Tascam as well. And then I'm recording this whole video to the hard drive, and I'm going to dump that audio into the uh, video, and we're going to match those up, and I can, I can break those up and show you how each one sounds individually as I talk about each microphone as well. Now, one of the things that I want to point out about this lavalier, this is a great lavalier and, and definitely worth the investment. Uh, the reason why I recommend it is because of, of several reasons. One is that uh, typically when I use it, I use it on stage, and I use the uh, Sennheiser um, wireless transceiver, and this allows me to be mobile and move around, and basically this uh, microphone will interface with that. Now, as I showed you right now, I've got it interfacing with a XLR. Uh, the other thing that comes with the microphone is of course there's the uh, little case little carrying case here which protects it and also it has a it has a wind protector if you want to use it for the outdoors it also has um, a little adapter here that allows me to connect it to the the uh, Sennheiser or if you use any other type of uh, wireless lavalier uh, system now the other thing that you can do is you can buy multiple types of adapters and of course I showed you the the XLR adapter but there's also another one here which is um, it's the Rode Micon 2 adapter, and I haven't even taken it out of the package yet, but this allows you to interface it with your PC or your maybe your cell phone. You want to look it up online to see what it will interface with, but one great way to use this if you're mobile or even sitting at your desk is you record into the Zoom H1 recorder, which is about a $100 recorder, records to a, a flash, a removable flash card, and it has great sound, really clean preamps. Uh, you can go right from the lavalier right into that, and it will give you a great sound. It keeps it all portable as well. Um, so that covers that as far as the microphones go. And there's other solutions you can get as well. There's a, I want to show you this real quick. If you want to just interface right into the PC, 
you can buy microphones that have a large diaphragm, like the Yeti Blue mic. Um, there's also uh, those go those have a USB connection right into them. Rode makes a microphone. I think it's the the Podcaster that plugs into USB on your PC as well. You can use something like that. Now, if you have an existing XLR, or if you want to get an XLR uh, microphone, you can actually convert it over to USB with a device like this, which is called the MicPort Pro. And I really like this. This is a great device. It plugs right into the microphone right here with the XLR. And then you have the adjustments. You can, it has a mic port uh, or a, a headphone jack port on the back here, so you can listen and monitor the audio. You can adjust the volume there. You can also adjust the gain on here. And then there's also a USB port on the back that allows you to go straight into your PC. So these are a great device and there's different brands of this out there. I think uh, Blue Microphones makes one. Uh, might even be able to pick one up at Radio Shack as well. Um, but that's something to consider as well. So you get a lot of versatility there. All right, so let's go back again and just recap. We covered the, the Logitech C920 camera and that's the microphone uh, that's built into the Logitech C920 and that's what you're hearing me on now. And then we also talked about the Rode NT3 microphone, and that is uh, the, it's an XLR microphone. It's a larger diaphragm microphone. It's a great one. Um, there's other mics by Rode that are really good as well. And then we have the lavalier mic that's right here mounted on my shirt. It's the Rode lavalier mic. So there you go. You covered three different types of microphones. We've covered two cameras, and we have the GH4, the C920. There you go. And then as far as lighting goes, remember, you want to have your lights that are all the same color balance. And you'll see that when you buy your lights or your bulbs, a lot of times the manufacturers will put on their like daylight balance or uh, soft white or something like that. You want to pay attention to the number of Kelvin that it is. So for example, you'll see it's maybe 3400K or 5500K or 6500K. Be real careful about that because when you have different color temperatures it can cause your camera especially if you're using the G8 or the Logitech C920 it'll cause the white balance to kind of bounce around as you move around in the light or it adjusts it's trying to figure out what the white balance is and the best way to solve that issue and be able to get a, a real solid setting for your white balance is to just have all of the same color bulbs now also consider that if you have windows nearby if you're depending on the time of day you shoot if you shoot at night it's not a big concern but if you're shooting during the daytime you're gonna have daylight balance there and if you can't block all the light from there you probably want more daylight balance bulbs or at real bright bulbs so that you can overpower that and the dominant color is consistent um, with your your video recording so that's something to consider now we also talked about the most important thing as far as your broadcasts go and it's audio make sure you get a great audio I'd, I'd prefer that instead of going out and buying a really high-end camera or something go out and get yourself a really good microphone first start with that and then start adding other components get a different webcam or a different DSLR and there's lots of different DSLRs that you can interface into your PC with the HDMI out um, but there's a lot of solutions out there you consider. I really like the Panasonic, the, the Lumix, the GH4 and GH3 series. Uh, you can pick up the GH3s now used on, on eBay or Amazon and it's a pretty decent price on that and you get a lot of versatility with that camera. It shoots great high definition video, probably one of the best DSLR type cameras to shoot video with today. A lot of filmmakers are making movies with those as well. So that's it. That covers it. So today, go ahead and make a comment. Uh, share with me your experience of what you've had as far as your uh, equipment that you've used or things you've tested or things that didn't work out for you, uh, different headaches you've had. Or if you want to say thank you, you're welcome to do that as well. And by all means, share this video with other people if you think it'll help them. And whatever you do, get broadcasting. It doesn't matter about the hardware. It's more about your message. So make sure you have good audio. Start working on your video. Work in your presentation and you'll do fantastic. And the more you do, the better you'll get. Today, everyone is broadcasting, and it's important because it's a real significant way to reach people, and there's a lot of people that want to know what you have to share. So get out there and start sharing, and happy broadcasting.